Ludicrous Feed is proudly sponsored by Car Loop Data and Cobra Car Insurance. Hey everyone, so today I'm going to run through the installation and test of the Hanshou shortcut buttons bar for our 2023 Tesla Model Y. And uh, it's a pretty simple product really. There are four buttons here and there are eight shortcuts. So each button can be either pressed once or double tapped to activate the shortcut. And most importantly, one of the buttons is for uh, the traction battery preconditioning, which means that you can uh, manually precondition or heat up your uh, Tesla traction battery to the optimum temperature before you start DC fast charging your vehicle. Of course, recently Tesla has uh, added third party chargers to the uh, navigation screen, but uh, not all DC fast chargers are available just yet. So, in case your nearest charger is not available, there is still a manual preconditioning button available via this Hansho shortcut buttons bar. Uh, now, there are other products on the market, such as the Sexy Buttons. Now, that one uh, can be programmed, I believe, via an app. So that's one drawback of this uh, bar. You can't actually use an app or any other device to program which buttons you need. However, there are eight shortcuts, so that should keep you occupied, I think. Uh, there is also the uh, TestLogic uh, app, which also comes with a speedometer for uh, behind your steering wheel so I've reviewed that as well so that's another alternative uh, that one you've got to cycle through some menus to get to the preconditioning button whereas this bar just has that button right there for you ready to go so inside the kit which Hansho has supplied to me today thank you very much Hansho you of course get the bar itself get the harness which you must install into the CAN bus which I'll show you how to do and of course with any accessories I install comes with my usual disclaimer that you install these at your own risk. I personally uh, will only install accessories which I can easily uh, uninstall and it doesn't affect the uh, computer or the car long term. And I've installed many accessories on this channel as you've seen in the past and not once has Tesla service commented on any of them. Uh, my warranty has not been voided despite what people might say uh, on the internet. So however I do of course recommend that you seek your own advice and uh, anything you install is at your own risk. Nevertheless, okay, so that's the harness there. That's a pry tool to open up the back where the CAN bus port is. And then this is a USB-C cable which connects to the back of the bar, just here, right there. And then that bar basically sits here, inside the center storage area, which I'll show you as well later on. And finally, there is a transmitter module too, which connects to the CAN bus, and it connects to the uh, bar via a Bluetooth, I believe. All right, so, so let's install this into the um, CAN bus first. So before you access the CAN bus of the vehicle, I strongly recommend that you turn it off. So to do that, you press the car settings button, uh, go to safety, scroll down, and then just press power off. You sure you want to turn the power off? Yes, I do. Okay, so everything is switched off. Okay, so here I am in the second row, and I strongly suggest that you move at least one seat forward to uh, give yourself more room. Um, but you want to get access to down here, to this panel here, and that's where one of the CAN bus ports sits. You can use the uh, pry tool included with the kit to pry it open. I find that if you've got um, small enough fingers, or at least slender enough fingers like I do, then you can actually uh, reach under there and just pull it forward like this. So. So I've obviously loosened it already, <laughs> uh, which made it look easy, but yeah, it's sort of, it's all plastic anyway, so uh, if you hit the right spot, it should just flip open like that. Okay, so behind the panel, lots of wiring. Uh, that is the CAN bus port there in blue. Now, I've already got a harness in there because I'm running um, the OBD Link uh, MX Plus, which is basically a transmitter to the Scan My Tesla app, which gives me lots of information about our Tesla Model Y. Um, but if you don't have anything else installed in there, it will basically look like this. Okay, so ta-da, that's what it looks like uh, in its default setting. And that's what I mean about accessories which you can return back to baseline pretty easily. That's the name of my game. I don't want to do anything too extreme to modify the vehicle, but any accessories I install, I always make sure I can return it back to baseline, such as this right now. So obviously, if you've got anything else running at the back here, uh, remove it first. I suppose you can daisy chain the harness. I've done that in the past with another accessory, in our Tesla Model 3. 
but if you don't want to risk that, that's fine. Just remove any other harness you might have running. But if this is your first time back here, it's pretty easy to undo this. Um, use the pry tool to push this here and then slide this out. So I can't do this with one hand, but I will do it for you off camera and then come back in a second. Okay, so you see that I've pushed that tab forward and then pushed the plug outward and uh, be mindful never to uh, pull anything by the wires. It's just not good practice. Try to um, push and pull via the plastic. Okay, so now this will come out pretty easily. There we are. Separated, and now we grab our harness. Okay, so this is our harness, and that is essentially a bypass uh, for this uh, CAN bus port here. So one end obviously goes in like that, and then the other end will slot into the socket right there. So let's do that for you. Okay, so the harness is now plugged in. As you can see, uh, one end is connected to the original plug, and the other end is connected to the socket. It's pretty straightforward. And of course, make sure you select the right vehicle from the Hansha website when you purchase this product. Okay, so the final piece of the puzzle is to install the module. And that's basically just clicking that into there. And it also comes with adhesive and Velcro to uh, secure the module. All right, let's do that. It should be pretty straightforward. Okay, so signs are good. I've plugged in and I can see a little blue light just there, which means that it's probably now transmitting. So let's go ahead and install the buttons themselves. And before you put everything back together, I recommend testing it first, so you don't have to come back and uh, pull apart that panel. All right, so congratulations, you did the difficult bit installing the uh, transmitter. Now we install the easy bit, which is the bar itself. So open the center storage area like this, and inside you will see two USB-C ports right there, one and two. And then on the bar itself, I recommend plugging in the straight part into the bar back here with the lights facing outwards. So you've got the buttons facing up like this and the USB A and C port here. And then plug the other end, which is the right angled plug into the port here on the left side. Okay, and then you know you're working because the lights are now on and they come on every time you slide open the cover of the center storage area. And then to install the bar, it's pretty straightforward. Just hold it at an angle like this, right? And then just slide it back and that sits right there and you're good to go. So let's close the cover. Yep, and then when you open it, the light is there, as you can see. Um, there's also a little slot there. So if you want to utilize that second USB-C slot. So for example here, there's another cable which I've slotted through that hole, um, which could be plugged into the USB-C port down there. Okay, so the first button, the round one, one click is to turn the reading light on and off. So I'm gonna hover my finger here and I'm gonna click it and show you the lights. Okay, so there's the front lights. Click once. Off. On. Nice. Okay, so double clicking the round button opens the right front door. So let's do that. All right. You heard that right? And there it is. So let's do that one more time for you. I'm going to shut that door. So double click that button again. There. So it leaves it ajar. Okay, so let's press that once. Hey, that's nice. Can't close it again. You've got to physically close it. Otherwise it just opens the latch again, but that's actually quite useful. Okay, the second uh, function for that button, double clicking it will open the right rear door. So let's uh, press this twice. Okay, so you hear that door opening and the right rear door is now ajar. Okay, the third square button, single click opens and folds the rear view mirror. I think they mean the side mirror, um, the wing mirrors rather than rear view mirror. So let's uh, do that. So press that once. There we go. So that is like that. So let's press it again. There we go. So it unfolds. Nice. That might be handy, I guess. Um, and then double clicking it opens the frunk or the bonnet. So let's double click. Again, that might actually be useful because, but then again, to be honest, you can always just press open the bonnet from the screen too. So yeah, I don't know. <laughs> nice to have another option, I suppose. Of course, you can't automatically close it again. And the final button, which may be of interest to a lot of us, is um, the one that can actually manually precondition the battery. So uh, the first click does that, battery preconditioning. I'll leave that to the end because I want to show you the second one to start with, which is opening the boot. That's also quite handy. So double click, you can hear it and shown graphically as well on the screen that it's open. 
You can also close it as well with the button. So double click. You can hear it. And image shows that it closes as well. Okay, so that brings us to the final function, which is single click for manual preconditioning. So let's do that right now. So push that. Okay, and I think I can hear a change in the sound of the vehicle. I'm pretty sure it's uh, heating up. So let's go to my test logic app. So we will prove that it is indeed working. Uh, we need to actually have the car in motion for that to happen because at the moment with the car stationary, the battery heating doesn't happen. So let's pop the car into uh, reverse up my driveway. Okay, let's see. There we go. So the battery is starting to preheat when I have the car in motion. It's pretty cool. And then forward as well. There. So yeah, it's a nice safety feature not to have the battery preconditioning when the car is stationary. All right, everyone. Well, that is the Han Show shortcut buttons for uh, Tesla Model 3 and Model Y. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, any questions or comments, please leave them below. Otherwise, stay safe until the next ludicrous speed video. Happy charging, everyone.